Welcome to another episode of the 100 most repeated Uniband post UTME question. Oh, and as well, your likely post UTME questions 2022. Just like I told you, take this question serious. Go over these videos over and over again, and please share these videos to your friends. Abba, don't pass alone. Share this to your potential classmates on your status, on your WhatsApp groups, on your Facebook pages. Make sure you share them. That's the only way you can you can help us push this ministry forward. You know, it's a ministry that we have started together and you're gonna have us always. Even when you enter school, university, we are there, any university of your choice at all. Okay, now let's proceed. Now let's move over to our physics episode. You know, the first of all, stopped at question number 10 in physics. Now we are starting with question 11. You know, just like I told you, each episode is um, 10 videos and we'll have a total of 10 um, episodes, which is 100 videos. So our second physics question, physics question number 11. This question says, um, which of the following instrument is used to measure relative humidity? Instruments for measuring relative um, humidity. Relative humidity. Now, first of all, we'll talk about humidity. What is humidity? Humidity the amount of water in the atmosphere. Now we have option A, barometer. Let's bring out the options. A, barometer. Option B, hydrometer. Option C, anemometer. And we have option D, hygrometer. Okay, relative humidity. Now we are going to look at all these measurement measuring instruments so that in case we have any question related to this, we can easily tackle them and deal with them. Now, hydrometer is an instrument used for measuring relative pressure. I'm sorry, barometer is an instrument used for measuring relative um, pressure. Hydrometer, hydro, mark the word, hydro, D-R-O, is used for measuring relative density. Relative density. And we have as well, anemometer. Anemometer is used for measuring wind speed. Why hydro, grow, grow, the one that has H-D-R-O, is used for measuring relative humidity. So the correct answer to this option is option D, relative humidity. Now let's go to question 12. Question 12 says, a ball of mass 1 kg, um, first from a height 2, 3 meters, and rebounds to a height 2 meters after striking a horizontal surface. The loss in energy due to um, this impact is what? Okay, let's look at the options. Option A, option A said 100 joules, option B said 50 joules, option C said 10 joules, Option D said one joule. Okay, we have the mass to be one kg, and we have that it's um it falls from a, a a a height of three meters and falls back to another height of two meters. What is the loss of energy now here? We have that this thing fall from a height. They didn't tell us that this thing was performing, um, was performing, um, this ball was performing any action. No, we have two energies. We have um, potential PE and KE. And we made us to know that PE is the energy of a body at rest. KE is the energy of a body to do what? And we made us to know that this object just fall from a height. They didn't tell us that this object covered a distance. There's no distance cover because you cannot talk about um, energy at work without covering a distance. Energy at work is the energy that takes an ob object to move from one place to another. But there's no distance covered here. So that means we are going to use potential energy. And the formula for potential energy is MGH. You know, we have height, we have M. And we know that G is uh, taking us 10. Now, let's solve now. If we are going to calculate the energy loss, to calculate the energy loss, it's going to be, uh, we are going to calculate 
the first energy minus the rebound energy. So we are going to have something like this MGH of initial um, NGH1 minus MGH2. Now, this is the first energy. This is the rebound energy. Now, to calculate um, further, M is common between them and um, G is common between them. We're going to have M. Um, we're going to have the energy is going to M G H minus H. M G um, H minus H. H1 minus H2. And we'll have that this one is 3 and this one is 2. Now, putting our M, let's bring our parameters. 1. 1 times 10 bracket. The first height is 3 and the second height is 2. Remember, we are calculating for um, the loss in energy. So using this, we are going to have 1 times 10 minus um, 1 times 10 3 times 1. So we are going to have 1 times 10 times 1 is equals to 10. So the um, energy is 10 joules. So let's check our option. Option 1 said 100 joules. Option 2 said 50 joules. Option C said 10. Option D said 1. So the correct answer is 10. Option C is correct. Question 13. Question 13 says a projectile attains a maximum range of 40 meters when g is equal to 10 meter per second. Calculate the velocity of the velocity of the projection. A says 40 meters square, uh, 40, 40 meters per second. B said 80 meters per second. C said 20 meters per second. D said 10 meters per second. Now let's proceed. Um, we are given that the maximum range is equals to 40 meters, and we are given that g is equals to 10. We are asked to calculate u, which is the unknown, which is the velocity. Now, I want you to note, maximum range, range is maximum when um, um, theta is equals to 45 degrees. Note this. You'll be needing this in your exams. Now, let's solve. Now, we have a formula in projectile motion that has a relationship between R, G, and U. The formula said R equals to U square over G. Now, we are giving R to be 40. 40 is equals to U square over G, which means U square G is 10, sorry, U square is equals to 40 times 10, and which is equals to 400. U square is equals to 400. U is equals to square root of 400. U is equals to 20, um, 20 meters per second. So let's check our option again. Option A said 40 meters per second, B said 80, C said 20. So the correct option is option C, 20 meters per second. Now let me show you all the formulas you'll be needing to calculate for projectile. You're going to solve for T, you're going to solve for T, you're going to solve for H, you're going to solve for R. Now T is the time to reach the maximum height. Let's say for example, this is your projectile starting from here. Now T is the time to go from here to here. That is time to reach this maximum height. So this t is equals to u sine theta all over g. Velocity sine um, theta all over g. Then t, this one is the total time of flight. This t is equals to 2 times t. So if you are solving, just solve this one, multiply by 2, or use this formula 2 um, sine theta all over g. Now this height is. Um, the maximum height attained by the projectile. Then to calculate by the maximum height is equals to u square sine square theta all over 2g. The range, range is um, u square sine 2 theta all over g. Now, when this is what we got our um, r equals to u square all over theta. So, when theta is equals to um, 45, sine 2 theta will be equals to 0. So you have that maximum range will be equals to u square all over g. That was when we have that maximum range. Now let's go to the next question. A ball of mass 10 kg strikes a wall normally with a velocity of 5 meters per second and travels back with the same velocity. Calculate the impulse. A ball of mass. What is the mass there? 
the mass is 10 kg. Um, strikes a wall with a velocity u is equals to 5 meter per second returns with the same velocity 5 meter per second now let's draw a diagrammatic representation of what really happened here now this is a ball this ball has a mass of 10 kg and it's moving in a horizontal um, distance this is a wall it comes and strikes this wall with a velocity of 5 meters per second it hit this wall and goes back to where it started because this distance is also 5 meters per second now this is what happened here going from um, west to east this thing is in a positive um, positive velocity since it's going back again to where it started is or uh, um, going through a negative velocity with, if it's acceleration this will be a retardation because it's going back to where it started from which means that this second velocity is minus five now we have that impulse we have that impulse um i is equals to ft first times time or impulse is equals to change in momentum and change in momentum is equals to mv minus m u so which means that our impulse equals to m which is 10 kg bracket 5 minus minus 5 or you can say minus 5 minus 5 since one of them is negative which is to say that minus 5 minus 5 equals to 10 impulse is equals to 10 times 10 impulse is equals to 100 100 meters so the correct option is 100 now let's look at option from a says zero zero meters b said um sorry meter per second 100 meter per second because we're talking about mass and velocity a says zero uh, meter per second b said 2.25 meter per second c said 50 d said 100 the correct option is 100 uh, is option d 100 meters per second this one says the limiting frictional force of a body of mass 4 kg resting on an inclined plane is 20 newton what is the angle of inclination on the plane frictional force r is equals to 20 newton and um okay it's resting on a body with mass m is equals to 4 kg now we are trying to calculate angle of inclination which is um which is theta now we are, um, we have the formula that force is equals to mass times acceleration but force on an inclined plane f frictional force is equals to ma sine theta sine theta will be equals to force all over mass times acceleration now we have our force to be 20 our mass acceleration 4 mass is 4 times acceleration 10 4 times 10 is 40 sine um, theta now 20 all over 40 is it sine theta is equals to 0 0.5 now we're going to ask for theta theta is sine inverse of 0 0.5 now to get sine inverse of 0 0.5 remember that note this sine 30 is equals to 0 0.5 so that means sine inverse of 0 0.5 is equals to 30 so theta is equals to 30 so the correct option let's check our options again we have um a 75 degrees um b 60 degrees C 45 degrees D 40 30 degrees the correct option is option D 40 degrees now let's solve question 15 what is the efficiency of a cell with internal resistance where it supplies current to a 7 ohm resistor efficiency of internal resistance I'm talking about efficiency of of resistance now we have a formula which relates efficiency and resistance and internal resistance with this efficiency equals to resistance all over 
Inter resistance plus internal resistance times 100 all over 1. Now, while that efficiency is equal to, we are made to understand that um, internal resistance is 3, where it supplies a current to a 7 ohm resistor. So the resistor is 7 all over 7 plus 3 times 100. E is equals to 7 all over 10 times 100. 10 divided by 10, 10. 10 times 7. So therefore, E is equals to 70%. Percent. Let's look at our option. Option A said 70%, B 30%, C 20%, D 45%. So the correct answer is option A, A 70%. Percent. Wow. Okay. Thank you for this class. Um, this is the end of the episode for physics. We love you. Make sure you share um, these videos to everyone. Learning online haven't been more fun. Exquisite Online Tutorials is a household name. When it comes to academic excellence in online tutoring of 100 level students, 200 level students and college entrance examination candidates. With the power of artificial intelligence and human studies. Exquisite online tutorials have been able to interact with the intelligence of students worldwide, making the good ones better and even the better ones best. Just like Science Bob, Exquisite Tutorials has a great faculty of erudite tutors that inject knowledge whether science or business management to the cerebrum of her students. QTME lectures and other college entrance examination lectures are going on as well. Do you still need a physical tutor? No. Exquisite Tutorials got you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter and Facebook.